I'm still with you, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm still Anna Yermakova. And now we are in one of uh, the most interesting places in our city, in the hero city of Sevastopol. It is historical park. And the main attraction here is panorama that you can find just behind me. It is one of four panorama museums that we have in Russian Federation nowadays. And the official name of this museum is Panorama, Defense of Sevastopol, 1854-1855. And it is dedicated to the very cruel war, the Crimean War that happened on the territory of our peninsula in the very middle of the 19th century. During the Crimean War, Russia, Russian Empire, alone struggled with four countries. It were, those countries were Great Britain, France, the Ottoman Empire and the Kingdom of Sardinia. And one real day from a very long siege of Sevastopol that lasted for 349 days is depicted in the canvas that we will see a little bit later inside. And uh, inside we will uh, find very soon a wonderful canvas that is dedicated to one real day that happened during very long siege of Sevastopol that lasted for 349 days. And we will see how Russian defenders of our city, Russian heroes, tried to repulse French attack. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. And at last, now we are in Panorama, we are inside. And uh, this cultural portrait that meets us in the entrance hall, this is the portrait of the artist who painted our Sevastopol Panorama. His name was Franz Roubaud. Uh, don't think that it is Lenin. He looks just lit a little bit like him, that's it. And Franz Roubaud was a very famous battle painter. He was a Frenchman by his origin, but most part of his life he spent in Russia and he liked to repeat during all his life that he had Russian soul and Russian heart. That's why all his life was dedicated to Russian battle painting. And our Sevastopol panorama was one of his three panoramas that he painted during his life. Uh, probably you heard his name in Moscow because it was he who painted another very famous panorama canvas. This is the Battle of Borodino. Uh, it is one of the most famous Moscow museums. And uh, Rubor spent 10 years to finish Sevastopol canvas, but he worked in Germany. And only when this round building that we saw from outside was finished in Sevastopol, uh, with special train, the canvas was delivered from Germany, from Munich to Sevastopol, and in 1905 the museum was opened for the first time. During the Second World War, the building of Panorama was almost completely destroyed because several German air bombs got into the building and everything inside was on fire. And Soviet soldiers and sailors tried to save what was possible and they started to cut the canvas with their knives. And they managed to save 86 big and uh, small fragments uh, of a very big canvas. Everything was evacuated to Siberia. And after the war, only after the victory, Soviet artists decided to paint new panorama. And it was finished in three years. And in 1954, Panorama Museum in Sevastopol was opened for the second time. And now we will go upstairs. 
hello and at last here we are on the viewpoint or the observation platform in panorama and how do you like it ladies and gentlemen we are in a round building and from here from this viewpoint we can see completely round canvas around us it is 115 meters long it is 14 meters high and what do you think what is the distance from the viewpoint where i am standing to the painting itself you have time to think and when you come here to sevastopol i will tell you the answer and the main peculiarity of our museum of our panorama is that here one can find not only the canvas itself not only the picture the painting but also what we call object plan some real things and i would like to show you an example if you look a little bit ahead can you see the horse and the cart the horse is painted by the canvas but the cart is an object plan is an object plan and very often it's really impossible to understand where the canvas ends and where the object plan begins. And uh, we are on the battlefield. This is what we have to imagine. And you know the artist Franz Rubor, he didn't want to show his fantasy or anything like that. He depicted one real day from a very long Sevastopol siege that lasted for almost one year. And uh, he decided to depict the day when, for the very first time, French troops decided to try to occupy Malachov Hill, this bastion where now we are standing. Uh, they tried to occupy it during the assault. And now we can see how Russian soldiers and sailors are repulsing that French attack. All Russian sailors are wearing long grey soldiers' coats and the sailors are in white shirts and black trousers. And one of the figures, the figure of the main, one of really main Russian heroes I'd like to show, this is Admiral Nahimov, who was the commander-in-chief of our Russian Black Sea Fleet during the Crimean War and now we will see the place where Nahimov was mortally wounded. Russian artillery batteries. And look, even the soldiers, Russian soldiers, they are, I told them they are wearing long gray coats, they are firing a little bit down and ahead. They are trying to repulse French attack. But where Frenchmen are, look, they are pretty far away on the opposite slopes, already on the green grass, and all French people are wearing red and blue uniform. But that day, Russian defenders of Sevastopol and of Malachov Hill Bastion succeeded and repulsed French attack. Not only from this bastion, but from other seven Russian bastions as well. That's why it was decided to depict, to depict that very day in this canvas. And now we can see the officers dug out that was almost completely destroyed by one of enemies cannonballs and look how realistic it looks here in the museum and here they are Russian cannons most of them are ship guns so they were taken from the ships because before they were scuttled across the main Sevastopol harbor and you see how very simple if not to say primitive the fortifications on all Russian bastions look like baskets with sand and ground sandbags that's it. Mm -hmm. 
But what is a bastion? It's the fortification on the top of the hill and in Sevastopol it was really easy to do this because the whole city is located on the hills, not very high, but anyway hills. And now we are on the territory of one of the most important bastions. This bastion had number four and you see this number is very well seen on the monument. And this bastion was very and very close to Sevastopol downtown. That's why for us, for Russian people, it was really very important one. And one of the main heroes who took part in the defense of the city on the territory of this bastion number four was a very famous Russian writer and I'm sure that you know his name. It was Leo Tolstoy, the writer who wrote, of course, very famous novels War and Peace, Anna Karenina, but also he wrote wonderful Sevastopol stories or the sketches of Sevastopol. A little bit later all of those sketches were translated into different absolutely into absolutely different languages. And now we will come a little bit closer to the monument to him. Almost for everybody in the world, the name of Leo Tolstoy is connected with literature. And of course, we all know that he was a famous writer, the author of such wonderful novels as War and Peace and Anna Karenina. And not everybody knows that Tolstoy was the participant of the Crimean War. When the war just started, Tolstoy was just 29 years old. He was a professional artilleryman. And uh, moreover, he was the commander of one of numerous Russian artillery batteries, one of those that were based here on the 4th Sevastopol bastion. And uh, almost for everybody, again also in the world, Tolstoy is very well known as an old person with white beard. But here, even in this monument, we can see him rather young person without any beard at all uh, and uh, you know when uh, uh, Tolstoy started uh, to write his uh, War and Peace novel he remembered almost every day his own experience that Tolstoy got here in besieged Sevastopol during the Crimean War that's why War and Peace became really outstanding novel in which war, not Crimean war, but another war that happened in Russia in 1812, uh, it was the war of Russia with Napoleon's army, is very well described. Aha, here we are. This is so-called cannon yard. You see, this space was enough just for one cannon. And if you are curious what is this, these are baskets that were filled with sand, ground, stones, whatever. And these are sandbags. And this is how the fortification for each cannon like that looked like. And this is the cannon itself. Can you imagine, these cannons are, this one is more than 200 years old. And by the way, do you know that these cannons were one of the reasons why Russia lost the Crimean War. This cannon is a smooth bore, not rifled. And the cannonball from such cannon could fly just for a distance of two, sometimes two and a half kilometers. It was nothing if to compare it to British or French cannons. But what is interesting here, you see, the eagle with two heads and such two-headed eagle was the symbol of Russian Empire and even nowadays you can find such eagle on the Russian state flag. <laughs> 